Do you guys remember this video where I debunked the anabolic to androgenic rating that William Lovell enlisted in the anabolics books? Where he said that the anabolic to androgenic rating of trimbolone, acetate, enetate, or hexahydrobenzocarbonate was 500 each when compared to nandrolone acetate without a single reference to back up that statement? Turns out he wasn't that far off. So I did the absolute unthinkable, something that nobody in their right minds should ever do, but all of these mega dosing trimbolone cycles that I did in my late 20s have made me a little bit crazy, so I did it anyway. So Steve, where in the hell do these anabolic to androgenic ratings actually come from? And I'm glad you asked, they come from the anabolics books written by William Llewellyn. The latest release is the 11th edition, published in 2017. I'll link it down below. You'll have to purchase it, but it's well worth the read. I collected all of the anabolic to androgenic ratings from the anabolics 11th edition. I'll put them on the screen right now. It's an easy to understand list, including the reference standards that each anabolic androgenic steroid was compared to. I added in the alternative chemical names, in case you're not really familiar with the name that is on the screen as well as all of the commonly used uh, and known brand names and classified all of these steroids according to the administration route. So you don't have to. And as all of these ratings are scrolling on the screen, you see a common occurrence. The standard in many cases isn't just testosterone, it's also testosterone propionate, which has an ester, or it's methyl testosterone, which isn't really bioidentical to the testosterone you produce endogenously and neither is it bioidentical to the testosterone that rats produce. And as I alluded to earlier, testosterone with an anabolic to androgenic rating of 100 each is its own standard, right? Comparing testosterone endogenously to exogenous testosterone yields an anabolic to androgenic rating of 100 each. And then we have another outlier. Trimbolone, the reference standard, is nandrolone acetate, giving it an anabolic and androgenic rating of 500 each. But I thought Trembolone was five times more potent than testosterone. I thought that the reference standard for Trembolone was testosterone, not nandrolone acetate, which has an ester. Can we do some dubious extrapolation using math, not magnets, right? not magnets, we're going to use math to see how Trembolone compares to testosterone. First, I want to mention that um, nandrolone acetate is an ester. But when you look at the anabolic androgenic rating of Phenajet, it's 500 to 500, which is uh, trembolone acetate. But Trendable, trembolone inethate, also has an androgenic to anabolic rating of 500. And uh, Parabolin, trembolone hexahydrobenzocarbonate, also has an androgenic to anabolic rating of 500 each, all being compared to nandrolone acetate. So if we don't have to care about the ester, right? Acetate is irrelevant, the inethate is irrelevant, uh, hexahydrobenzocarbonate is irrelevant. Again, using some highly dubious and speculative math, comparing nandrolone to the reference standard of testosterone, extrapolating that using testosterone as the reference standard for trembolone, that would give trembolone an anabolic rating of 625 and an androgenic rating of 185. Interesting. Now, that isn't right, right? I mean, we can't use math to kind of calculate it that way. We need to have uh, actual scientific evidence to kind of determine what Trembolone uh, does anabolic-wise and androgenic-wise when compared to testosterone or, you know, if that is not available compared to testosterone propionate or maybe even methyl testosterone. But I'm still highly curious where this anabolic to androgenic rating of Trembolone compared to nandrolone acetate actually stems from. So I went through all the references of the Anabolics 11th edition. Every segment of Trembolone lists six citations. I went through all of them and didn't find anything about Trembolone being compared to nandrolone acetate. So please, let's put the community to work. If you can reproduce this Hirschberger bioassay comparing Trembolone to nandrolone acetate, post it down below. I'm very interested in reading it. I've done a lot of research. I found close to 10 other more recent Hertzberger bioassays comparing uh, Trembolone to testosterone propionate. And the anabolic and androgenic effects are quite different from what is being listed in the Anabolics 11th edition. The ones that I was able to find, the general consensus seems to be that Trembolone mostly has an anabolic effect on the levator ani muscle and less of an androgenic effect on the ventral prostate and seminal vesicles and a couple other organs which are included in the highly updated, highly standardized version of the Hirschberger bioassays, which were established in about 
2011. But when you take the ester percentage and molecular weight into consideration, then you already see that this ratio starts to fall apart. Nandrolone's molecule is a little bit heavier when compared to trembolone. That means that you get less molecules of nandrolone when injecting the exact same amount of milligrams of trembolone, discounting for the esters. And if you account for the difference in ester weight, then these ratios might have a discrepancy between 25.9% less to 27.8% more nandrolone molecules compared to trembolone molecules, even if the milligram dosages were exactly the same. The details are on the screen, but let's dive a little bit deeper into all available Hershberger bioassays, which I was able to piece together for trembolone acetate, enetate, and trembolone no ester. So I did the absolute unthinkable, something that nobody in their right minds should ever do, but all of these mega dosing trembolone cycles that I did in my late 20s have made me a little bit crazy. So I did it anyway. I indexed all available Hershberger bioassays performed on trembolone since the early days, grouped weight changes of the Levator Ani plus bulbal cavernosus muscles together with changes in total bone mineral density and hemoglobin concentrations under the desired anabolic effects when combined to testosterone and methyl testosterone. And weight changes of the ventral prostate, seminal vesicles plus coagulating glands, Cowper's gland, glands penis, preputial glands, pituitary gland, adrenals, epididymitis, kidneys and liver under the undesired androgenic effects. And the weight changes of the retroperitoneal fat pad within the abdomen as the lipolytic rating of trembolone. I spent a good three days on this and I wouldn't have gotten this far without Dr. Dean St. Mart's contributions and insights. Thank you very much. If you want to do your own calculations, all of the available Hershberger bioassays performed on trembolone are down below. All you have to do is follow the citations, whip out your calculator in your Excel sheet, and then, well, I'll see you in a week or so because this was a major undertaking. Now, before we get into the ratings, it's very important to understand that trembolone is often investigated at various increasing dosages, while the reference standard of testosterone or methyl testosterone is only studied in a single dose. Based on the setup of these assays, there seem to be diminishing returns as the dose of trembolone increases compared to the exact same dose of the reference standard being testosterone or methyl testosterone. At lower dosages, trembolone has anabolic selectivity for the Levator Ani plus bulbal cavernosus muscles in the pelvic floor, but no androgenic effects in the ventral prostate, seminal vesicles plus coagulating gland, Cowper's gland, or gland's penis insinuating selective androgen receptor modulating like effects. In many of these assays, the weight of these tissues ends up lower following trembolone treatment compared to the control or terectomized castrated rodents, which is eerily similar results to the human clinical trials where Trestlone was administered, showing that prostate volume comes down compared to the control groups. To be fair, these SARM-like effects are only observed with oral trembolone no ester administrations, and since oral trembolone isn't methylated, it has very poor oral bioavailability. This is why methyl testosterone should be compared to methyltrienolone, methyltren, I'll give you the spoiler alert, methyltren wins by fatality, hands down. Oh, and by the way, as the dose of trembolone escalates upwards, the anabolic effects become less pronounced, but the energetic effects become more and more and more, again, compared to the exact same dose, of testosterone or methyl testosterone. So I went through all converted data and selected dosages where trembolone was significantly more anabolic than androgenic, looked up the average body weight of the strain of rats or mice used to investigate the androgenic or anabolic effects on various tissues. As many of these Hershberger bioassays went with set dosages, not dosages based on milligrams per kilograms of body weight of these mice or rats. So there might be some miscalculations here or there, but this is the best I can do. Still, I did my absolute best to calculate the milligram per kilogram dosages based on the average body weight of these rodents, and then ran these numbers through DoseCal to get the human equivalent dose based on body weight. Unfortunately, most of these results, are, again, are stemming from trembolone enantate or trembolone no ester, so I did the conversion to trembolone acetate, which seems to be the most common ester used nowadays. And here are the results. If you're after a selective androgen receptor-like effect with an anabolic to androgenic disassociation of 3.7 to 8.8 .8 
to one being that the anabolic effect is between, let's say, 3.7 to 8.8 .8 more pronounced than the androgenic effect. Then, based on the animal dose of 0.250 milligrams per kilograms body weight trinoester to 0.321 milligrams per kilogram body weight trimalone inotate daily administered to rats subcutaneously. Um, let's say you're 100 kilograms, that would be a weekly intake between 25.76 milligrams to 32.83 milligrams total. Now, I know these numbers are highly dubious, but it's just to show that a low dose of trembolone based on body weight, right? The numbers are on the screen, might not yield an androgenic effect if you're worried about prostate or any of these other tissues that trembolone might potentiate action in. So again, more scientific evidence, albeit dubiously extrapolated from animal models that would trembolone less is more and more trend just means more energetic side effects now i get it running up to 40 milligrams tremble on acetate doesn't really sound very exciting if you're after phenomenal gains or pulling bits looking good on the beach if you're a 100 kilo human being running let's say 50 milligrams to 75 milligrams tremble on acetate weekly then the anabolic to androgenic disassociation is two to one basically a low and effective dose of trembolone is about twice as anabolic as androgenic. So let's start pulling all of the Herzberger bioassay results together into a comprehensive rating system. When we dose match and injection round match using the reference standard of testosterone, no ester, propionate, and enethate comparing to trembolone, no ester, acetate, and enethate, then trembolone has an anabolic rating between 57.9 to 255.6 and an androgenic rating of 6.6 to 131.7 with a lipolytic rating of 211.1. Looks very promising, right? Let's say twice as anabolic as androgenic. And if we dose match an oral administration match, a comparison between testosterone and trembolone, then unfortunately we don't have any results. But if we do the exact same thing for me methyl testosterone and trembolone, then trembolone has an anabolic rating compared to methyl testosterone of only 3.3 and an androgenic rating of 0.2 to 10.8 and that's probably because the oral bioavailability of trembolone is so poor compared to methyl testosterone which is 17 alpha alkylated which prevents the metabolism the breakdown in the liver following oral administration if we injection match the Herzberger bioassays and forego the dosages comparing testosterone no ester propionate and enethate to trembolone no ester acetate and enethate all right discounting for all of the esters then the anabolic rating is between 20 to 752, and the androgenic rating is 3.5 to 414.9, with a lipolytic rating between 211.1 to 450.6. Man, powerful stuff, which to be fair is actually very similar to the, let's say, imagined anabolic to androgenic rating by William Lovellen, listed in the anabolics books, and if we pull everything together, similar to the Handbook of Experimental Pharmacology, volume 43, combining all of the available Herzberger bioassays at that time, you see that if it's oral and injectable matched, regardless of ester, comparing a reference standard of testosterone to trembolone, that the anabolic rating is between 0 0.2 to 752, and the androgenic rating is 0 to 414.9 with a lipolytic rating similar to the previous results, 211 to 450.6. One more study I want to highlight and then we're done. Performed by Newman et al. Published in 1976, a very long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, titled Pharmacological and Endocrinological Studies on Anabolic Agents. This is a very interesting take on trimalone acetate dosing by Newman. He proposed that since trembolone acetate is about three times as androgenic as testosterone propionate, not entirely sure which Herzberger bioassay he's referring because of full publication I couldn't find. And since testosterone propionate is only active in dosages of 10 milligrams to 20 milligrams daily, he proposed a third of the dose at 3 milligrams to 5 milligrams trembolone acetate daily to initiate similar effects. And that will be 35 milligrams trembolone acetate weekly, which I can certainly get behind, albeit not entirely for the exact same reasoning, because we just debunked trembolone's androgenicity 
yet again. I want to thank Dr. Dean St. Mart for helping me interpret all of these Hershberger Bau assays and assisting me to calculate new and improved updated anabolic to androgenic ratings based on the molecular weight discounting for all of the esters, which was very inconsistent amongst the Hershberger bow assays. I mean, how long do you want to run the Trembolone sandwich when you're as health conscious and as risk averse as I am? Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video, probably about Trembolone.